More news from Norfolk, Suffolk and Essex now. And the family of a young girl from Little Clacton in Essex who had her hands and lower limbs amputated after contracting meningitis say it's beyond belief that her uncle stole more than £300,000 from her trust fund. Darren Peace had been running the fund set up for Ellie Mae Chalice. Lorna Ramsey reports. Ellie Mae's determination and spirit inspires everyone who meets her. We filmed her at the family's caravan in Great Yarmouth in April when she became the youngest person ever to have blades fitted. When she was 16 months old, she lost her hands and lower legs to meningitis. Her story attracted massive public support and well-wishers from across the country donated money to help her. But the man the family put in charge of looking after Ellie's trust, her uncle Darren Pease, stole more than £300,000 over three years. Pease, who's 33 and from Dagenham, admitted fraud and deception and was jailed for four years at Basildon Crown Court. Ellie May's family live here in Little Clacton and they didn't want to appear on camera today. But they told me they're very disappointed with Pease's jail sentence. They say no one knows more than him what the family's been through. So the fact that he stole from Ellie May's fund is beyond belief. And many other people in Little Clacton feel the same way. There's no bigger betrayal of trust to a child, the family, the people that gave to it in good faith. To think that it, you know, he's done that is absolutely atrocious. Yeah, it's sickening to think that you can't even trust your own family members. Pease worked for Lloyds Bank, which has now refunded the money. But nothing can make up for the sense of betrayal that this family feels. Lorna Ramsey, Anglia News. Army-style surveillance drones could soon be used to patrol the region's coastline as part of a new crackdown on drug smugglers. The unmanned aerial vehicles, similar to this one, have been used by the military for several years. Essex and Kent police are now considering using them to monitor the coastline. We share a helicopter with Essex, um, but it has limitations. The good thing about the new technology is um, it's currently used in military environment and it can stay up, to, stay up in the air for 15 to 16 hours. Well, that's something that we haven't currently got. A last-ditched attempt is being made to save an historic pier in Great Yarmouth that was used by Lord Nelson. The structure on the resort seafront has fallen into disrepair. The council admit they are struggling to raise the money needed. So now the Great Yarmouth Archaeological Society is asking English Heritage for help. Football and Ipswich Town are back in championship action on Sunday when they face a tough trip to Cardiff. Manager Roy Keane said today that new on-loan striker Stern John will be in the squad. John played for Keane at Sunderland. He's confident it will help solve Town's goal-scoring problems. And it's FA Cup second round weekend. Get through this stage and a possible glamour and money-spinning tie against a Premier League team could be waiting. Donovan Blake looks ahead to the action. There were no sponsors' ribbons tied to the FA Cup when former Colchester striker Vic Keeble held it more than 50 years ago. That was when Newcastle last won the famous old trophy. Keeble was in the Magpies team, which beat Manchester City at Wembley in 1955, having joined them from Colchester three years earlier. It was an era where, which uh, the FA Cup was was the most famous tournament, and to uh, progress and get through to the final it was just something a bit special. Keeble, who's now 79, joined other Colchester legends as the FA's trophy tour reached the town this week, building up to the year's second round tie at Hereford. Famed FA Cup giant killers paired together, with Colchester's win over Leeds nearly 40 years ago still revered. I was in charge of the commercial stuff here in 71 and uh, that day was, was out of this world. They were three up just after half time and literally they could have been four or five up. But in the end, they were clinging on like dear death. What chance of uh, some of that FA Cup magic rubbing on cultures to this season? Well, that's something you all hope for because um, it's amazing what, what a run in the cup will do for everybody. It's not only Colchester bidding for a potentially lucrative place in round three. Norwich, who treated a national TV audience to a seven-goal exhibition at non-league Poulton in the last round, are on the road again, this time at Carlisle. You wouldn't treat it any differently because we want to try and get through the game. Uh, uh, different in a way that there's not pressure on you as in three points for the, for the league, but it's still a big game. And, and if we can get through it, and we do get a, a favourable tie at home, 
then it gives you that opportunity to progress again. Meanwhile, it's home advantage for Cambridge, who beat Ilkston in the last round, against another Blue Square Premier Division side, York City. All dreaming of landing a money-spinning tie against the likes of cup holders Chelsea or Premier League champions Manchester United. Dreams can come true, though. Vic Keeble's hoping they do for the U's. Donovan Blake, Anglian News, Colchester. Some wonderful old footage there. Good luck to our sides over the weekend in the FA Cup. Now football shirts, scarves and other memorabilia left in tribute to Sir Bobby Robson are being sent to disadvantaged people across the world. Thousands of items were left by fans at Sir Bobby's former clubs, including Ipswich Town, when he died earlier this year. Charities will now send them to Africa, Asia, South America and Eastern Europe. Right, some news just in and a story we've been following here on Anglia tonight over the weeks, and that is that a, a school dinner lady who was sacked for telling parents that their child was being bullied has lost an appeal against her dismissal. Carol Hill was fired by Great Tay Primary School near Colchester after being told she'd breached the child's confidentiality. Well, the Education Secretary, Ed Balls, has written to the chairman on the school's governors, raising his concerns over the way the case has been handled. Well, it has been.